Well, one thing you won't get out of me is a theory. I can't get into it. Everything I do, I have to take out of measurements that I make. It doesn't matter a dang what other people say or do. Oddly enough, I can't use it. You know, politics is the same. I hear them jabbering politics left and right. I can't listen because I can't do anything. Without being able to be functional, the heck with it, you know. You're wasting your time. So that's my opinion on lots of things. It goes right to the heart of what I work on. I don't read about things unless they bear on my business. I don't talk to people about things unless it bears on my business. I am selfish to the nth degree. What's your business? Getting at the root of the very thing that seems to propel John's work. I play the thing called EVOs. What is an EVO? An exotic vacuum object. It's a thing. Because you can certainly see it, fool with it, mess with it, make it do things, it does things for you. So it's a thing for sure, object. An exotic vacuum actually is a real world word. It's, it's a state of the universe, I'd call it, called the vacuum. Is uh, this substrate that everything is performed on in principle. You know, but now principle is theory. This is theory. And, and yeah. Bordering on it, and I'm stopping. But I wanted to introduce you to the interface that I have to to play with. I can play with these things. I can make them. I can make all kinds of stuff. And over the years, very slowly, I've been getting at the root of the stuff that John saw early on. I haven't followed anything recently. I don't think I could gain by it much because there was enough done very early on that I I can still spend years on. You know. But I don't actually work on it. I just keep chugging down my path, and every now and then I say, oh, now I understand how that thing that John did could have happened. Like, on the subject of uh, gravity, I don't give a hoot about gravity, as long as there's a source of propulsion. Propulsion is a, as fundamental as you can get. It's controllable gravity directional control over whatever force you want. I'm sure if you could liken it to gravity, but I, I'll take propulsion any day. Why have our animal features been traded off? They're not necessary. And there are limited variations that we can afford to carry forward in our evolutionary process. We can't fix everything and move it all forward. Some stuff is left behind. So we left the animal things behind because they weren't necessary. We, we, evolved a, a, a mental process, a thinking process. Uh, we were able to view a scene and make determinations about what's going to happen. Boy, that's pretty good. It's not exactly uh, what you call precognition, but it's darn useful. What about those that have precognition? Or not. I don't know. That's an argumentative field. I used to work in it. I did a lot of ESP type stuff. And I just got sick of it. hearing these stories that people would tell. There was no way to back them up at all. They didn't. I uh, gave up the field and said, until a Hewlett Packard or Tronic comes out with a meter that says psychic strength, you know, I'm out of it. But this is work I'm doing is beginning to show me that there is something funny going on here. Because I can measure the funniest stuff you would ever want to hear about. Like what things do you measure? I measure the presence, if you will, measured in terms of total accumulated charge or total residual charge of this EVO. They vary. Well, nothing varies charge or mass. These things do. That is so fundamentally opposed to all natural laws, the natural meaning man made that we've written down, that uh, it's outrageous. We have The written rule law says this, charge is conserved, mass is conserved, energy is conserved, E is equal to MC squared, they all hitch together. Wrong. Just dead wrong. Because I could take one of these little funny particles and change its charge by actual measurement. I mean, this is no hand-waving thing. Measure with an instrument, you can do it every day you want to. You can change it over a billion to one and still have it visible. 
heck of a deal. I can keep reducing the charge to where it becomes an item that walks right through things. That's how John's earliest work seemed to have stuff coming from the inside. He had been using a technique similar to what I used of injecting these chargeless particles into the core of material. They're usually metal in John's case. They can be fascinated with it. It doesn't much matter. Anything serves as a, as a uh, transport medium, if you will, for these things. Once they get in, they can transform themselves back into an energetic thing, just mean and nasty as can be, by increasing the charge. And at that point, they come out mad. They have many pictures of John's stuff that I've got that shows them coming out. I never used to understand how they get in there. I understood what you do when you sling someone by the circle of a metal thing. They're an explosive mark. And these, these EVO straight marks are very common, but what wasn't common or unknown, totally unknown to me in those days, was how they can penetrate and get in. Finally one day it showed up, I was shooting through metal, shouldn't be able to, tr to transmit that particle, charge, through that metal. Did it, no problem. Violation of physics, fundamental, nasty violation. So... There's space between molecules. Everything has a space between doesn't them. matter if the thing that's going through has no charge, because its ability to transmit is a function of its charge, like a neutron flies through all this stuff. It doesn't see anything. You don't even talk about space, you know, or forget the space between things. Even if it went straight to the core of this molecule, it would go right on through, because it doesn't have any charge, which is the only interactive force that there is around. That we know of. Well, that there is around means that, you know, that we know of. That we know of. Interesting. Well, I've been always fascinated with Ken's work and seeing the incredible photographs that you take of the EVOs. You know, my, my former partner there, George, is, I think he's on the wrong track with all this stuff. The photographs are really amazing to look at. EVO is something in a vacuum, an object in a vacuum. Correct. An exotic vacuum object. If we were talking about what is the exotic vacuum, forgetting the gizmo, the object that I play with, there is a definition of the exotic vacuum. The vacuum, you realize, is a physics term. The vacuum is not a vacuum. It doesn't mean that you've removed all the molecules. It means it's the substrate that all our visible universe, all our active universe, is built upon the vacuum. And that's a theory. This was the origin of the notion of zero-point energy. A theory. It is not measurable in many senses, but it is postulated as a theory. A virtue of the fact you have to have something for these things to reside on. Things, anything, any molecule, any atom, any particle, has to have a substrate. And the vacuum, in quotes, is the substrate. That's a hunk of theory that people have. I don't have to put up with it because I got a gadget. It's so wild and so weird. Are you going to show us the gadget? Well, you have to go to the pictures to see them because the gadget is shown through an instrument. An instrument uh, of a very different, different sort than usual. 